Hockey and polar bears might soon be a thing of the past. Uh, scientist Stephen Armstrong uh, drops by to discuss this. Uh, it's pretty striking. Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Got my uh, New York Times climate newsletter email thing today, and they're reporting on a new study that was just published in Canada where they looked at six National Hockey League cities, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, Montreal, New York, and Toronto. And in each one of those cities, we have records going back to the 1940s of, of high quality backyard skating, ice skating rinks. And this is where, you know, kids learn how to ice skate and they end up going into the National Hockey League. And so people take good, you know, they keep good records. And I just want to share one sentence from this uh, with you. Uh, in the winter of 1942, 43, the first year of the original six era, that is the, you know, the six cities of the National Hockey League, there were close to 60 days, six zero, 60 days when Torontonians could expect high quality skating conditions in backyard rinks. Last year, there were about 20 days, from 60 days to 20 days. Something really big is happening all around the world. It is affecting our ecosystems. It is affecting our lives. And Dr. Stephen Amstrup is with us. He's the chief scientist at Polar Bears International, the co-author of another study that uh, was just recently published. You can find it at polarbearsinternational.org. Uh, his Twitter handle is at polarbears. Great Twitter handle. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, let's get into this. Dr. Amstrup, welcome to the program. Tell me, tell me about your study. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. And, uh, yeah, the, the example that you gave of uh, the disappearance of hockey rinks in Toronto is really very relevant to the disappearance of the sea ice and its effect on polar bears. Uh, polar bears are one of the very few species we have that depends on a habitat that literally melts as temperatures rise. And uh, back in 2010, I projected, uh, my colleagues and I projected in a paper in Nature, that uh, we could lose about two-thirds of the world's polar bears by the middle of this century if we continued on an unmitigated greenhouse gas emission, emissions path. Uh, what this study shows, the study that was released last Monday, uh, shows not only that, uh, that those general project, uh, projections are true, but also uh, establishes a timeline for when different populations within the global range of polar bears are likely to start to fail. And this is especially important to Canadians where uh, about two thirds of the world's polar bears live in Canada. And uh, you know, in Manitoba, for example, uh, the community of Churchill is considered the polar bear capital of the world but the polar bears that live there are going to be among the first to wink out. So uh, this because is a, a big deal. Is that because, because of, that's a, you know, in the context of the Arctic Circle, that's a relatively southward community and therefore their ice is melting faster? Is that, is that why? That's, that's right. And uh, yeah, so uh, the, the areas where we projected uh, we would see the earliest declines are in the southern portions of the polar bear range in Hudson Bay and Davis Strait, and then also in portions of the uh, uh, polar basin where currents continually take the sea ice as it's forming, uh, take it into the center of the polar basin. And in the summertime, what that means is uh, that there's no ice along the shore like there used to be. Setting aside the aesthetic of uh, cute fuzzy animals going extinct. Um, what is the larger story here? What does this mean for our ecosystems and the, uh, and, and the future of humanity? Well, I think you put your, uh, your finger on the most important point. Uh, my view is that uh, polar bears and the message that they're conveying is important because of the... Uh, impact that the global warming that humans are creating, uh, the impact that that's having on polar bears is coming to all of us. And you mentioned hockey rinks in Toronto. Uh, a colleague of mine and I did some projections looking at future temperatures in Toronto 
And by the latter part of this century, the climate in Toronto is going to look like the current climate in Washington, D.C. There are no hockey Mm -hmm. rinks in Washington, D.C., and, um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a very. So when does when, when does the southern third of the United States start to look like Death Valley? I mean, you know, at what point does desertification, if I'm saying that, if I'm pronouncing that word correctly, uh, you know, the, 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 the growth of deserts, it, it's been happening in northern Africa now since the 1980s in ways that are very measurable. It's happening across Asia. Um, I don't think that we've seen it in a big way in the Americas, or have we? Is this already setting in? Well, uh, you know, I'm not as familiar with uh, some of the models that might project, pro- project what we might see in the southern tiers. Uh, in the southern mm-hmm. tier. Because you're looking at the northern uh, part. Yeah. I'm looking at, at so, uh, polar bears. However, uh, I have looked at some models uh, forecasting, for example, that uh, by the latter part of this century, uh, uh, Davis, California, central California, will have a climate more similar to that of Phoenix. Uh, many people mm-hmm. who uh, saw me uh, present that in a talk uh, in Davis were very concerned because they didn't like that idea. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we are seeing a gradual uh, s- a situation where the climate, the arid climate of the West is gradually moving towards the Midwest at the same time that the more humid East is kind of uh, building up more and more moisture. And so we're seeing in parts of the world or parts of the country uh, much more significant uh, rainfall events uh, and in other parts of the country, much more frequent and significant drought events. And these things so have been projected for, uh, by climate scientists for decades, and uh, now they're coming to pass. Yeah. Dr. Stephen Anstrup, he is the chief scientist of Polar Bears International, the co-author of this new study. You can read the whole thing at polarbearsinternational.org. Uh, Dr. Anstrup, uh, thanks so much for dropping by. It's been great talking with you.